Now that I've spent a couple months with the Valve Steam Deck, I've discovered scenarios where the device shines and where it doesn't. The Steam Deck is truly an all-in-one product that delivers an incredible gaming experience by itself, but that doesn't mean it can't be improved with a variety of third-party accessories. In today's video, I'll show you how I've created the ultimate mobile gaming setup. When I prepare to leave the house, there is a few things I always take with me. Out of everything I need, my wallet just might be the most important. From RFID blocking ejection wallets to solar powered GPS trackers, Exter has modern products designed for you or the techie in your life. Stick around later in this video and I'll show you more. Lounging around the house is my favorite way to use the Steam Deck. I have a gaming PC that I thoroughly enjoy, but sometimes I don't want to be confined to my desk with a mouse and keyboard. Relaxing in bed playing Celeste while my wife watches her TV shows, or playing Lego Star Wars with my kids in the playroom are ways I can integrate gaming more seamlessly into my daily life. For these particular use cases, the Steam Deck is just about perfect. What happens when I want to leave the house and take all my games with me. Let's unload this backpack together and I'll show you everything I use to make the most of my Steam Deck while I'm away. Every edition of the Steam Deck comes with a protective carrying case that can store both the deck and the 45 watt power adapter. I talked about how much I like this case in my full review, but we're gonna need something bigger to fit all of our accessories. The Copac laptop bag is the one that I've chosen to use. It has ample storage for my gear, an integrated USB port for charging, and a theft resistant pocket for concealing expensive devices. Full disclosure, I actually bought this backpack more than five years ago when I went back to school. Once I graduated, I started using it for work, and then now that I work from home, it's become my Steam Deck accessory bag. In that time, I've not had a single worn strap, broken zipper, or even a loose thread. Not bad for a bag that regularly sells for less than $30. My only real complaint is that the drink pockets on either side of the bag aren't quite big enough for a hefty 40 ounce water bottle. There are many other bags out there that are very similar to this one, and I'm sure most of them are great, but this is the one that I've used and it has thoroughly impressed me. One of the features I really like about the deck is that I can stream games from a PC on my home network and play them on the deck. This means games don't need to be physically installed in order for me to play them. Unfortunately, when I'm away from home, any game I want to play needs to be installed locally. Thankfully, the deck supports standard micro SD cards for game expansion. I purchased a 1TB UHSI micro SD card for about $120. This was enough to fit the majority of my deck compatible library. Other capacities are also available and can likewise be found using my affiliate link. While the Steam Deck is generally well built, you'll probably want to give a little extra protection if you're planning on bringing it out into the wild, or your local Starbucks. A screen protector is a must have, and this tempered glass one from Benaz Camp has worked well for me. Some users have reported issues with screen protectors impacting the touchscreen, but I've not had any problems so far. There are rubberized grip cases available as well, but keep in mind these may impact compatibility with the carrying case or other accessories. I didn't feel the need to go that far, but I included a link to a well-reviewed product if you choose to go that route. If you're going to be away from a wall outlet for any amount of time, a power bank is an absolute necessity. I recommend a 45 watt power delivery 3.0 bank with at least a 15,000 milliamp hour capacity. This will charge the deck at its rated speed and offer enough juice for more than two full charges. The one I chose was a 65 watt, 30,000 milliamp hour bank by Basis. It charges up to five devices at a time with four USB-A ports and one USB-C port. It can also be charged via the same USB-C port or the micro USB or lightning connector. What I really like about this battery is that it shows the percentage remaining, the rate it's being charged at, and the rate it's being depleted. It's the perfect companion to power the Steam Deck and the other accessories that I'm about to to go over. The single USB-C port on the top of the deck may seem minimal, but it can actually do quite a bit. Much like a modern laptop, this connector supports 45 watt charging, 5 gigabyte per second data transfers, 
gigabit ethernet, and a display output of 4K 120Hz or 8K 60Hz. While the deck does support the input and output specifications I just described, finding a compatible hub proved to be more difficult than I anticipated. After some trial and error, I came across the DocTech 6-in-1 USB-C adapter. The dongle has a USB-C port for 100 watt power delivery charging, a 5 gigabyte per second USB-C port, two 5 gigabyte per second USB-A ports, a gigabit ethernet port, and a 4K60 HDMI port. And this all fits in a slim package that's easy to carry. At just $40, this single device can transform the Steam Deck into a full-fledged gaming computer. But what if instead of an adapter, you want a full-fledged docking station? Well, those of you that have been following Steam Deck news for some time are probably wondering about Valve's own first-party deck dock. While we know it's in the works, Valve has delayed the official release and has not provided an update in a few months. Thankfully, some third-party vendors have produced their own alternatives in Valve's absence. Ivalor was one of the first on the scene, and they sent me a 5-in-1 docking station for review. Unlike the official dock, this one is lacking both gigabit ethernet and DisplayPort. The HDMI connection is downgraded from 2.0 to 1.4, and the three USB ports are only USB 3.0. For most mobile use cases, however, these deficiencies shouldn't really be a big deal. If you're on the go, you likely won't have access to a wired internet connection, and most portable monitors are only HDMI anyway. The USB-C power delivery is capable of 65 watts charging, but keep in mind the Steam Deck will only charge at its rated 45 watts. USB accessories like controllers, mice, keyboards, flash drives, and etc. can be powered directly by the dock over USB. But more power-hungry devices such as monitors, will cause the Steam Deck to throw a slow charger warning. If you're planning to set up your deck this way, the monitor should be powered independently. The packaging for the device is minimal and its incredibly lightweight does not inspire much confidence, but ultimately, it does everything as advertised. It's on sale right now for $36, and at that price, I think it's worth it. The optically bonded IPS display of the Steam Deck measures 1280 by 800 pixels and runs at 60 hertz. These specs are perfectly adequate for a mobile device, but what isn't great is the limited 400 nits brightness. This is fine for use inside, but not sufficient for outdoor gaming. To resolve this, I use an external display in the form of a portable monitor. The monitor is powered by the battery bank and connects to a hub via HDMI. Not only does a larger, brighter stationary display provide a better individual experience, it also greatly enhances the group experience, as playing split screen on a seven inch display isn't exactly fun. This particular model has a bright 1920 by 1080 15 inch panel in a fabric cover that doubles as a stand. Models similar to this one can be found between 120 and 150 dollars. The Steam Deck has a surprisingly comfortable form factor given its large size. But if we're going through the effort of packing a full accessory bag, it makes sense to bring a controller or two. I'm personally partial to Xbox controllers, but most other USB or Bluetooth devices should work just fine. A first party Xbox controller should run you about $50, but the Elite Series 2 is currently going for closer to $150. On my PC, I regularly swap between mouse and keyboard and controller, depending on the game I'm trying to run. With the Steam Deck, however, I feel that if I include a mouse and keyboard in my setup, I've gone full circle and integrated all of the inconveniences of a desktop gaming experience with all the limitations of mobile gaming. So for that reason, I don't have a dedicated mouse and keyboard for gaming on the deck. I do, however, make it a habit to bring a compact typing device for other legitimate reasons. Occasionally, I find myself needing to go into the Linux desktop and make a few tweaks. This would be borderline impossible to achieve using just the controller and integrated touchscreen. Additionally, some games require me to sign a third-party end-user license agreement or periodically sign into their online services. The deck's on-screen keyboard usually does a pretty good job of handling this, but having a keyboard and trackpad on hand has saved me more than once. For this limited use case, I recommend the Logitech K400 Plus. Now, you're not going to be winning any esports tournaments anytime soon with this board, but it's compact, has a USB dongle and Bluetooth, an integrated trackpad, mouse left and right buttons, media controls, directional arrows, and the included AA batteries last forever. I bought this keyboard four years ago and I've never replaced the batteries. Not to mention, it's just 28 bucks.
When I'm out and about, there's almost no feeling worse than realizing I don't have my wallet on me. I immediately start retracing my steps and hope I find it before someone else does. Thankfully, Extra makes products for situations just like this. Their solar powered tracker card fits in any standard sized wallet and can be detected up to 200 feet away. The app can also show me the last time it was within range. I paired this with one of their mini aluminum card holders and now hopefully, I won't ever lose it again. The ejection mechanism can hold up to six cards or two cards in a tracker, and an additional nine cards can be stored in the expandable RFID blocking plate. If space grade aluminum isn't your speed, Extra also sells card holders in vegan recycled leather or carbon fiber. Other wallets, bags, and accessories built for the 21st century can be found using my Extra affiliate link. The Steam Deck has truly shaken up the industry. Being able to take your PC games on the go is a dream come true for many of us. But in the pursuit of practicality and affordability, some compromises needed to be made. Thankfully, there are products out there to fill that gap. I hope some of the accessories I highlighted today help you to make the most of your mobile gaming experience. Links to everything I talked about today can be found in the video description. Check out these other videos for tech product reviews and impressions we've done before. And if you like what you see, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.